Hello fellow computer enthusiasts, welcome to ILTP WC. My name is Christian, hope you're doing well today. In today's episode we will talk about WireGuard VPN and I teach you how to create a VPN tunnel in under 5 minutes. And that works like a charm on every operation system, whether it be Windows, Linux, Android or iOS. So let's get started. But before we deep dive into the WireGuard VPN tunnel, I would like to show you the setup that we will create in this episode and let me explain why it might be also a very handy use case in your home network. Let's assume you have a server in your home network where you host all your personal photos and videos and you want to access them from outside while being on vacation for example. That's where VPN solutions like WireGuard come into play because they allow you to connect to your home network from every device by knowing your home network's public IP address or utilizing a dynamic DNS service in case you have a non-static IP address at home. Just a few years ago, hosting and especially configuring a VPN server was not easy. But with WireGuard it's easy now, so let's get to the terminal and create our test installation. <laughs> So let's start. On the left side you see the server that I'm connected to, it's an Ubuntu machine, as well as our client which is also an Ubuntu machine. But WireGuard runs on essentially every device, so you can also install it on Windows, iOS, Android and so on. The first thing that we need to do is to install the WireGuard tools, because the WireGuard um, kernel module itself is already included into the uh, kernel, which uh, runs in this Ubuntu version. So the first thing that we need to do is apt install WireGuard. Same thing on the client. So after we have installed the tools, we will see that the kernel seems already be up to date. We have to create our configuration file as well as the public and the private key that is necessary in order to exchange information from one system and another. So the first thing that we need to do is to generate a public and a private key for the server as well as for the client. We do this with a wg gen key, pipe t private key, pipe wg up key, and to the file public key, okay. And we do the same thing on the client, okay. Now that we have the keys, we can uh, start to write the necessary configuration files. So we do the swim etc wireguard and we create the um, wg0.conf for our interface. The server configuration is pretty easy. The only thing we need to add at this point in time is an address. This can be uh, any address that you would like to use, as well as a port that the WireGuard um, server should listen to. And we also need the private key from the server, which we have uh, generated a second ago. So let's copy and paste it. So I cut the private key and then I will copy, oh, excuse me, I will copy the private key. And don't share your private key in the internet as I do. Okay, and for now we are good to go. Next thing that we need to do, we need to create a configuration file on our client machine, which is also wg0.conf. And the client configuration looks like the following. I will copy and paste. Uh, you also find all this information on GitHub links down below on the video. Okay, and the first thing that we need is the server public key. So let's cut the public key from the server and insert it into our client.
as well as the private key from our client. We will copy and paste it. I want the file is not available because I'm not a sudo user. So let's do it again with sudo. But before we do that, let's cut the public key and copy and paste it into our configuration. So with a private key. So that's a private key from our client. I add it to the configuration and then we'll copy and paste the configuration back to the etc wireguard wg0.conf. So vim etc wireguard vg0.conf. Okay, and now we are also allowed to write to this file. Okay, we have added our client private key as well as the server public key, which is this one. Okay, next thing we tell them that he should route everything, uh, the whole traffic from our client to the server. And we have to specify the end port from the server. And this is the IP address of the server. So in your case, it's your router's um, public IP address. And um, if this might change, you might utilize the dynamic DNS system in order to get this updated. Um, next thing that we need to do is to save this and to adjust the server configuration file again. Okay, and we need to add our first peer because um, WireGuard is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. We can um, add multiple, but for our use case, it's currently just, okay, you have your client and you would like to access your home network. Therefore, it's just one client and our home network. So we add the allowed IP address from our client as well as the public key from our client. So public key is here. We will add it. Uh, there's also a mismatch. It's a client pub key, not server public key, but this is just a command. Okay, now we save it. The next thing that we're going to do is we now start the WireGuard uh, tunnel um, with systemctl. So first on the server. So let's do systemctl start wg quick at the interface wg0 we don't get an error which is uh, pretty good and we do the same thing on our client authentication complete we also did not get an error so let's see if the service is successfully running systemctl status wg quick and so on at wg0 and we see the kernel module is active and running and we do the same thing on our client. Okay, let's see if our connection with WireGuard is now working. Use WG show to see if you already have a connection. Okay, and we see the latest handshake is one minute ago. And now we can try to make an SSH connection from our client to the server with the IP address that we have identified in our WireGuard configuration. SSH is working, it's asking me for a password. Okay, now that we have created our first VPN tunnel in just three minutes, that routes the whole traffic from our client to our home network, let's talk about WireGuard and see how it works. So WireGuard is a communication protocol and open source software that implements encrypted virtual private networks and was designed with a goal of ease of use, high speed performance and low attack surface. The WireGuard protocol passes traffic over UDP, which also is a small disadvantage because it doesn't hide its VPN traffic and it's therefore not the best choice if you want to peer through a firewall, nor if you want to bypass censorship. WireGuard is using the latest cryptographic algorithm and is highly secure and due to its minimalistic design it is less taxing on CPU resources which is very good on old and not so powerful devices. And as always, thanks for watching this episode of ILTP WC. I hope you learned something and if you like what we are doing, please like and subscribe and see you in the next video. And don't forget to play with computers.